Okay, welcome back to another video. We're looking at aggregate supply in the macro economy. And in this video, we're going to spend a few minutes focusing on the key causes of shifts in short run aggregate supply. Here's our diagram. Uh, the aggregate supply curve in the short term can shift either to the left, an inward shift uh, from SRS1 to SRS2, or an outward shift from SRS1 to SRS3. And in this video, we're just going to be thinking about what might cause that to happen. So you can then analyze and apply this in exam questions. So our question is, what factors can cause a shift in short run aggregate supply, the curve itself? As I said in the previous video, when thinking about shifts in aggregate supply in the short term, focus on costs of production and in particular, focus on the unit cost, the cost per unit of getting goods and services to consumers across different industries from manufacturing through to, to services. Here are six factors I gave my students in my class that could cause a shift in short run aggregate supply. Uh, and uh, what I'd like you to do is maybe press the pause button or take a screenshot and have a go at these uh, little examples. Uh, what, what's the impact on the unit costs? Do they rise or fall? And then critically, what's the consequence for the short run aggregate supply curve? Is it an inward or an outward shift? Have a go. Uh, when you're ready, just press the play button and we'll go through these examples together. My first example is a stronger UK pound versus the dollar. In other words, an appreciation, an appreciation of the external value of the exchange rate. For example, the pound rising from one pound buys $1.20 to one pound buys $1.50. What's the impact on unit costs? Well, I think the answer is that unit costs will tend to go down uh, and that will cause an outward shift of aggregate supply. You see, uh, let's take the example of bananas. Let's say they're priced, uh, give them a global price of $2 per kilogram. Think about the import price for the UK. If one pound buys $1.20, well, divide $2 by $1.20, the UK price will be £1.67 per kilogram. But if the pound was to appreciate against the US dollar to one pound buys one dollar fifty, then that two dollar kilogram of bananas would only cost one pound thirty three coming into the UK. So a stronger pound, an appreciation of the exchange rate, other things being the same, ceteris paribus, will cause the price of imported goods and services coming into the country to go down. And for many suppliers, that's good news. That means their unit costs are lower than they might otherwise have been. The cost of imported energy and food and drink and maybe technology has gone down. That reduces unit costs. And if unit costs go down, the aggregate supply curve shifts outwards. Next one, the government increases the minimum wage by 10%, a, ch a chunky increase in the, in the minimum pay floor. While other things being the same, that would cause unit costs to go up causing an inward shift of aggregate supply. That would be the standard analysis. We're assuming lots of things here, but if firms have to pay a higher minimum wage, their variable costs of production, their labor costs will go up and uh, that will reduce their ability to supply goods and services. The next one develops this a little bit. Government increases the minimum wage by 4%, but labor productivity across the economy goes up by 10%. Well, that's quite a heroic assumption here, but let's, let's just look at the numbers. You see the labour cost will have gone up by 4% because of the minimum wage for those people affected, but workers' efficiency has increased by more than the increase in minimum wage. So you can make a plausible case for saying that unit costs would go down in that situation because productivity has risen faster than the wage rate. And if the unit costs go down, average, sorry, the labour costs go down per unit, aggregate supply in the short term will shift outwards. Number four, the UK leaves the European Union without a trade deal and the UK imposes tariffs of 11% on UK imports. So what might be the consequence of, of tariffs being imposed on goods and services coming into the UK? We do over 45% of our trade with the other 27 member nations of the EU. What's the consequence? Well, I think the answer there will be that unit costs will go up a tariff is a tax. Imports would therefore become more expensive. If you're importing fertilizer as a farmer, if you're importing cotton as a textile producer, if you're importing cars as a car retailer, your costs would go up 
and that causes supply to shift to the left. Number five, the government cuts a subsidy paid to farmers. A subsidy is basically some form of financial assistance. Now, if you cut a subsidy, well, a subsidy is the opposite of a tax, but if you cut a subsidy, then costs would go up. Unit costs would rise because the, the producers no longer have as much benefit from the subsidy. And again, that would cause an inward shift of supply. Final example, there's a rise in the global price, the world's price of raw materials imported into the UK. For example, the price of crude oil goes up or natural gas or copper or cotton or zinc, whatever it is. Other things being the same, unit costs would rise again. And if unit costs go up, short run aggregate supply will shift to the left. Oftentimes in exams, you get multiple choice questions where you're given a stimulus and you then have to think about what the consequences are, in this case, for short run aggregate supply. Hopefully that this little exercise will have been useful there. Here are the key factors summarized for you that affect short run aggregate supply. The crucial factor for many firms is the unit wage cost, the cost per unit of production from employing people, including a minimum wage. Productivity affects unit costs because the efficiency of output per hour, output per person employed, will impact on the cost of supply. So too, short run supply also affected by key raw material component prices, price of glass, cement, rubber used in manufacturing, energy costs, uh, the world price of oil and gas and things, and renewable energy would affect short run aggregate supply. Renewable energy is coming down in price globally, and that's being, that potentially will increase short run aggregate supply in many countries if you now have a, a access to a cheaper as well as cleaner source of energy. Uh, the government can clearly affect aggregate supply through their own indirect taxes and subsidies, all kinds of things, including VAT and uh, things like carbon taxes, environmental taxes, employment taxes. The cost of importing raw materials is crucial, <coughs> probably for many countries, particularly if impacted by the world price, but also by the exchange rate. Do you remember, a strong pound makes imports cheaper. And then we also have things like supply shocks, which can affect the short term supply. So these are really quite important. Supply shocks are unexpected events, which basically disrupt often short term production. It could be a hurricane, a tsunami, uh, it could be extreme weather events, political crisis. And of course, more recently, we've seen a fall in short term supply and inward shift because of lockdown, because of public health measures designed to try to control the pandemic. Uh, tiny, tiny exam hint for you. A lot of students commonly confuse the factors that shift short run aggregate supply with those that shift long run aggregate supply. Now, they are different. Any change in production cost in the short term will shift short run aggregate supply. In the next video, I just want to take you through a couple of examples of how to build a chain of reasoning to explain a shift in SRAS but I hope you found this, this video useful.